say, bro, another story type video, man. I used to give y'all these type of joints a lot earlier last year. Let's see what we got today. First thing first, we got to pay respect to that squad, though. Notification game check. What we lit then? What's popping? All right, fam. All right, ball checking in here. And today we have a lot to discuss. Now let's drop right into it. First off, salute notification game. Hitting that like button. Please start. Got a real up, uh, fam. Salute. Anyway, up first, we got the rapper slash singer. Okay, so let's think back to 2005, where the music industry is totally different from today. Yeah, Snoop and Pharrell at the top of the charts. Lil John and the Eastside Boys gave us Lovers and Friends, which was a classic. Featuring Usher and that boy Luda. Then you had Snap Music still popping. The Franchise Boys had everybody dancing with 5X white tees on. So I think they like me. Rappers really was out here 5'8 and wearing 3X white t-shirts, bro. What the hell was going on? Even television was different during that time. Girlfriend still was the go-to show for women. And Chappelle was still doing the Chappelle show. Outside of all of that, though, there was one singer slash rapper that was taking on his career full steam and that was houston somers now houston grew up in los angeles california he attended the academy of music at hamilton high school where his talent was recognized early which i know had to be extremely hard to stand out you got so many talented people attending the same academy it's kind of like aau basketball you got the top players in the country hooping with or playing against each other, and only the best of the best will stand out. Like they always say it's easy to be a big fish in a small pond. When you got a situation going on like that, it's easy to shine. But when you stand out amongst the best of the best, that speaks volumes to the skills you're equipped with at your craft. <laughs> With him being so skilled, he used to get automatic invitations to participate in any activities the school had going on. When people see that much greatness in you at an early age, they expect you to go on and do great things. Anything outside of being signed would be a disappointment. And the pressure was added on for Houston to get signed after his schoolmates Robert and Harold inked the deal with Aftermath. So people looking around at Houston like, ah, oh, damn, when you gonna get your deal? Like I said, fam, they expect Expectations for this man was at Buku levels, dog, at an early age. So his management team decided to have a me and put things in second gear. They was like, all right, here's what we gonna do. We gonna videotape one of Houston performances, and once the label see his skills on stage, they can't deny him. And they was doing this in hopes of landing a deal. So that was more pressure added on to Houston to perform great. So before Houston hit the stage, before each performance, knowing he being recorded in his mind, he thinking, bruh, this kind of a make or break situation for me. Like I told y'all earlier in the video, bruh, Houston used to get automatic invites to participate in school activities. So he used to perform it under pressure with the spotlight on him. So each time in those school performances, he would do great. And back. Then was more of the same, bro, because he knocked those videotape performances out the park. Now the pressure went from Houston to his management team. He held up his end of the deal. Now it was time to hold up theirs. So they had the task of getting that footage in the right hands. And they did. The team executed the plan perfectly, which led to him accomplishing his dream by signing to Capitol Records. And by the way, this was back when labels were signing people for talent instead of clout. Now, once a person gets signed, they thinking, bruh, I done made it. They started popping the champagne, dropping the confetti. But what they don't realize is once you get signed, the grind don't stop. You actually got to take it up a notch, dog. And that's exactly what Houston did. He found himself a hit with I Like That featuring Chingy Nate, dog, and I-20. Now, this song would carry steam all the way up until 2005, dog. The song was off his debut album. It was already written, and it peaked at number three on Billboard Hot R&B and Hip Hop songs and number 11 on Billboard Hot 100. As you can see, fam, Houston was living up to expectations and doing his thing, fam. And the ladies, they love them, dog. Once you got the ladies on your side as a singer, you winning. So Houston was out there been living that life. But things would take a tragic turn. During a night in London, after having dinner with his bodyguard, Marco Powell, where he found Houston in his room with his eye gouged out, fam. Powell stated the night of the incident, we had dinner at the hotel. 
After dinner, he went to his room to read the Bible. He's an avid reader of the Bible. After I finished E, I went upstairs to check on him and I noticed blood on the floor. Kristen usually has really bad nosebleeds. So I asked him, are you okay? Is your nose bleeding? He said, yeah, my nose is bleeding, but I'm cool. I will see you in the morning. I can't wait to get back to LA with my family. He was laying on the bed with a tire over his face. So something told me it was more than just a nosebleed. So I walked into the room to talk to him. I pulled the towel off his face and that's when I saw that he had gouged his eye out. He showed no pain and he had no remorse. He said he had to do it. He said that it had freed him from everything. He was happy after that. He said he was changed and was ready to go. That symbolic statement basically freed him from all the pain he was in. He feels like he is closer to God now. Now Houston's sister said those rumors are totally false. He's a Christian and knows what comes with taking himself out. His manager, Reno Rankin and Andrew Rowe of On Point Productions are no longer his managers, so they are trying to slander his name. One of Houston managers, Rowe, responded and said, Houston has a sickness. There's nothing to hide. He needs to be treated so he doesn't harm himself worse than he did or someone else. Houston's sister continued to say her brother is not sick and the whole thing was just an accident. Everybody spoke on the situation except for Houston himself, but a few years ago, he decided to open up about it. They said that you stabbed it out yourself and all these things that, you know what I'm saying, that there was drugs involved. Clear the record for everybody out there. Basically, the, the, the record's clear, you know what I mean? I, I, I got an eye injury, you know what I'm saying? Dealing with certain thugs, de, 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 dealing with certain gangsters, dealing with certain mafias. As you can see, fam, even with him explaining it, there's still conflicting stories behind the situation. Depending on who you ask, it's either mental illness, spiritual crisis, or dealing with certain thugs, like he said, or just an accident. There also was another story that came out where they said he was under the influence of PCP and tried to commit suicide by jumping out the window and his friends locked him in the room and that's when it happened. The crazy part is rumors are still circulating about the situation. Like I said, there are so many conflicting stories behind it. The last time we heard from Houston, it was this interview and also got word that a DUI charge he had was dropped. He also stated that the industry tried to change him so far from who he really was. He also stated once he got in the game, he saw a lot of dark things and the people he used to look up to, he saw the truth in them and he wanted to get far away from it. I'm from the hood, so where, where I come from, it's a whole nother element. Where, where I come from, different from the Hollywood scene, which is why I stay in the background in the scenes, because it's it's too it's too many fruit loops in the Hollywood scene, so I stay in the background. When it comes to, you know, taking you someplace and making you do something and sugarcoating you, I say no to it. Lee, I had to get out that industry, man, for a second and take a breather. Because everything was clobbering down on me. Everything was going a little bit too hard on me. You know, I was blowing up. I went gold with that single with Nate Dogg and Chingy. The way they was marking me, I wanted to come out with my real record. That record was written for me. I didn't come out with that record. The clothes I was wearing wasn't really me. You know what I mean? I'm more of a harder nigga as you can see you know what i mean they they put that michael jackson jacket on me you know made me wear that jacket and shit so i had to rip myself away before motherfuckers get the wrong impression about me it's just a sad overall story for such a talented individual bro as of now hopefully he's somewhat doing great physically and mentally i need y'all to comment down below what do y'all think about this entire situation if you enjoyed this video smash that like button for your boy also, do me another favor. Subscribe to the channel when you hit that sub button. Also, press that bell beside it so you get that notification anytime your boy upload. Also, comment down below. Who should I do a story on next? I'm out. Oddball. Gone.